Hey everybody and welcome back to the 17th episode of Brent Ewing's Hey Buddy Podcast. Guys, I want to thank you for, for hanging in there and sticking with me. It's been a pretty long hiatus. I got back here to Ohio in August and been working pretty steady. Also had some family issues going on, so I've been away from the the podcast for a little while. But uh, again, I appreciate you guys sticking in there. Um, thank you guys for all who purchased the shirts. The thank you video will be up soon. The check to the ALS Association will be sent out soon. You will see that on the video. But I'm going to switch things up a little bit on the podcast. Instead of doing a sit-down, one-on-one interview you know, each month with, with somebody new, uh, Big Ten football's back. And more importantly to me, Michigan football's back. We're going to talk about the Big Ten on here. Uh, it's going to be me and my uh, good friend, Bub Dunn. We're going to break down Michigan games every week, but we're also going to break down the Big Ten. We're going to pick a game each week and, and dissect it. Uh, other than the Michigan game, obviously, we're going to pick a game and, and dissect it and, and talk a little bit about it, see some pros and some cons, and go over scores and highlights and talk about, you know, other things throughout the country, but focus mostly on the Big Ten. Um, we are going to talk about the Buckeyes, guys. I'm going to have a couple of friends on here who are big Buckeye fans talking about them, giving some input. Big game next week for them. Uh, we will discuss that. Um, but yeah, I think it'll be fun. Hopefully you guys will like it. So for the next eight or nine weeks, you know, we'll be on here breaking that down. Hopefully sprinkle in some one-on-one interviews throughout that time as well. Just kind of depends on people's schedules and things like that. But we're hoping to get this out to you every Monday. This week it won't be out, obviously, until Wednesday. Just due to time constraints with work and things like that. But uh, hopefully each Monday for the next eight or nine weeks we'll have this out to you. Hopefully you guys like it, and thanks for sticking with me. So without further ado, guys, welcome back. Here's a 17th episode of Brent Ewing's Hey Buddy podcast. Big Ten football's back. Obviously more important to us, Michigan football's back. Let's just kind of jump into the game, and, and you know I'll give my thoughts a little bit on the opening. You chime in, give some thoughts. We'll just kind of go back and forth, talk a little bit about the offense, a little bit about the defense, a little bit about the special teams, whatever that is. Um, they still have special teams in Michigan? Unbelievable, dude. Unbelievable. But, uh, yeah, does that sound good? Sounds good to me. All right, dude. So, obviously, that first drive, man, love the first play. Get Blake Corum involved right away. True freshman. Oh, yeah. Dude is is known to be a blazer. Little, little, you know, quick pass out to him for, I think, a 24-yard gain. We start moving the chains a little bit. Things are looking good. And then all of a sudden, Ben Mason decides to – you know, to, to lay on a block and, and just keep blocking and keep blocking, blocks the guy out of bounds, flag thrown, changed the – I think he actually blocked him all the way down into Wisconsin. I think he did, like, yeah, it, right? It, it was – gosh, that he com- didn't quit. That completely changed the tone of the game at that point, and that's when I got nervous. Because, sure. you know, coming into the game, I believe uh, Minnesota was ranked 21 in one poll, 24 in another poll. Michigan was at the – eight, you know, I think 18 in both polls, but – I was nervous, man. Coming in, PJ Fleck, great, you know, great coach. What they did last year was pretty surprising. That's, so I agree. So you know, there's some nerves coming in, and when you start off like that on the road with a new quarterback coming in, it's like, oh man. And then you know, Minnesota goes down right away. I think two or three plays later, touchdown pass. <laughs> yeah, you know, touchdown. They, they go up, you know, seven to nothing really quick. What were your thoughts after that first drive? I was a little nervous. I mean, right off, we we for some reason special teams. And, and Michigan just recently, you know, they just don't get along. It, it's it's always a a blocked punt or a, or a missed field goal or something, and, and it just like you said, it completely changes the the face of the game. But like you had said a minute ago, PJ Flex done a great job in the past couple of years. You know, getting that team together. They went. I did not realize this, but they went eleven and two last year. Eleven and two, right? They were one win away from winning that side of the division. All they had to do was beat Wisconsin. Right. So that's a great showing. And and then to turn around and beat Auburn in the bowl game. Absolutely. I mean, that's a that's a that's a fantastic season for a program that for the most part in the Big Ten is not really known, you know, a lot for their for their football team. Right. Right. You'll have those spurts. They'll be like a Northwestern now yeah. spurts every once in a while where they'll be, you know, ranked top fifteen, top twenty for a while and then they kinda of fade out, then they'll come back, then they fade out, but yeah, I think Flex got him going in the right direction, and if for some reason Harbaugh would ever leave Michigan, I wouldn't mind seeing them look at Fleck. Hey, let's let's maybe yeah. bring this guy over. I like his intensity. Um, I just like the way he coaches. He's getting you know a lot of three star kids in there that he's 
I mean, eleven and two with a lot of three star guys. I mean, I know you got exactly. a you know he had a stud wide receiver Rashad Bateman, which you know he opted out of the season and then a couple weeks ago opted back in. Came back, yeah. That's a huge boost for him. He's gonna. I mean, that he, is. He had a great game. I think he had like nine catches, hundred one yards. Um, yep. But yeah, that was I, honestly, great for him. like I said, he, Bateman, great. You know, great player. Kept him in check for the most part as far as those big plays, mm-hmm. but he did get uh, some plays where he got out on the side and ran for some yardage. I am very impressed with uh, Muhammad Abraham. Oh, Their man. running back is a beast. Absolutely. That kid, he don't go down. Absolutely. I mean, it takes three, four people to get him down. And I wrote a little bit down about him, too. We'll talk talk about that when we get to kind of the stats of the game, but I'm, I'm with you. Good deal. Super impressed with that kid. Um, yeah, he and they're a running team. I mean, I think there was one point, and maybe it was the third quarter, where maybe it was the start of the third quarter. I can't remember exactly when, but they had – just a time of possession. We had like five minutes, and they had like fifteen minutes. Right. I mean, that just drives the tempo of the game down, and that'll wear a defense out. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why after that first possession, when you know they they kind of got that momentum, I was like, oh man, here we go. Oh yeah. And then we answer right away with the handoff and the seventy yard run by <laughs> Zach Charbonnet. Just yeah. blew right up the gut, man. And there was nobody there. Heck of a run. Um, there was, and and more than anything. On that run itself, offensive line did really good, which I'm impressed with because we lost four starters off that offensive line. Right. And then you throw Ben Mason in there, and between that line and Mason opened that hole up huge. I mean, there was nobody there. Right. Mason's just basically an extra lineman. I mean, that guy's a big Exactly. Yeah, he is. But good. that was, you know, great, great job opening that hole up and a great run. And then, you know, to follow it, follow that up, with a good defensive stand on the next Minnesota drive with Carlo Kemp and Cam McGrone getting in there and then and them having to punt. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that was a good follow-up to, to the, the block itself. Absolutely. Having a touchdown run and then having, you know, a good defensive stand to where they have to punt. Absolutely, man. And I think, you know, the, the, they calmed down after that first defensive drive. There's still, there's still quite a bit of, of uh, things that need worked on on that defense, obviously. Yeah, mm-hmm. giving up that many, sure. giving up that many points, but like you said, man, just that that getting that touchdown by Charbonnet and then coming back and having a great defensive stand, and Milton, you know, Milton was great all night. I was super impressed with this kid coming in, making his first start. You know, huge guy, six four, yeah. two thirty five, two forty, and just looks like a quarterback back there. You know, the last few years that's been our Achilles, man. If we would have had a quarterback that. You know, not taking anything away from Shea and Wilton and guys like that, but For sure. th- this guy appears to be on a different level. And I don't—I wasn't sold. I wasn't sold on him. I was—I was Dylan McCaffrey. I wasn't either. I saw. Uh, I was right there with you. You know, looking back at Milton throughout his high school years, he didn't even throw for fifty percent in high school. You know, but yeah. just reading a little bit into that, and uh, you know, doing a little research, they talked about how bad his his receivers were. You know, the competition they played in. Like so, I get it, but still, not to not to complete fifty percent in high school and then step up and be the starter this year had me kind of had me kind of nervous. Yeah. But I think the poise he showed, he didn't make any bad reads, didn't make any nope. you know maybe one or two bad throws, but I mean he settled down. He ended the game with I don't I mean he what did he have like two hundred and twenty five yards something like that? Uh, like yeah, he was two twenty five. I think he he completed what fifteen of 22, 23, something like that. Yeah. For- uh, like you said, you know. It, and not staggering numbers. Mm-hmm. One touchdown, two twenty-five yards. But again, someone who didn't watch the game would say, "Oh, those aren't great stats." But if you did watch the game, you would see, like you said, the poise mm-hmm. and the control that he had over the tone of that game. Right. I mean, he set the tone, and I was very impressed. I tell you who he reminds me of. He really reminds me of Cam Newton, mm-hmm. and I looked this up. He's almost the exact same. He's the exact same height and almost the same size as Cam Newton. And there was a couple times that he had designed QB runs that when he took off, like it did remind me of Cam Newton. Right. And I hope it's the Cam Newton of the years past, not the one that <laughs> threw three picks yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On, that on, was a terrible, <laughs> terrible showing. Onto that, onto that topic for a minute. All those people who said Brady was a system quarterback and mm-hmm. could only win with Belichick. Well, Brady seemed to have mm-hmm. a pretty decent day down in, in Los Angeles or uh, Las Vegas yesterday against the Raiders, didn't he? He did. Man. He uh, he did have very good, uh, very good showing there, but. 
again, back to, you know, Milton, I was very impressed with, with what he did in his first start. Mm -hmm. Um, I really expected some nerves throwing a pick, maybe a fumble, something like that. But I was very impressed with what the job that he did. Absolutely. And seeing him getting all these receivers involved, man, that was a big thing. Nine receivers caught a pass. Yes. You know, nine receivers. Which is great. Absolutely. That's great. It shows you the depth that they have. Not that they're tall wide receivers, but it shows you the depth that they have. Mm -hmm. And you got to think Tariq Black transferred out. Nico Collins opted out. That's those are two huge receivers that we had in the last couple of years. Yeah, Peoples Jones went in the draft. Yep. You know, so that's that's a big big difference right there. I kept holding out hope the last few weeks that Nico would say I'm coming (sighs) back. But I know I did too. But it is what it is. I was impressed with the speed. Like you said, the the height thing kind of scares me a little bit. When when you need that deep ball and you need guys to go up and mm-hmm. make catches, I mean, Cornelius Johnson is the only guy over six feet in the wide receiver you know department, and I don't even think he I don't it, he might have played, but he didn't you know he didn't catch a pass. Didn't have catch. No. Right. So that was kind of scary, but for him to throw you know to nine different receivers, I thought that's nice. Get everybody involved. He had that sure touchdown to Eric All down the middle that all oh, just yeah. dropped. He dropped it. Like, oh man, come on! I think that would have been All's first touchdown, maybe, and uh, yeah, just and he was wide pass. open. Great wide. play on that one too. They yeah. they bid on him, you know, taking a QB run on that, and at the linebackers were down. He had a wide open pass, and All just straight up dropped it. Just biffed it, man. I was I was I was concerned with no Eubanks. I don't know. He's obviously dealing through something going on right now, some little injury. But with not him not being on the field, I thought All. I was like, oh, he. I thought All played well despite that drop. He had another big catch later on. But I thought yes. overall he played pretty well. I agree. What do you think about the What do you think about the running back core? You know, every, a lot of a lot of guys got a lot of touches. Uh, we don't they have did. that I, one one featured back, but we kind of spread that around a little bit. What did you yep. think? I was surprised that uh, Quorum actually started out there. Honestly, mm-hmm. I mean, I know you know you're going to get everyone involved, but to see them put a true freshman out there on the first snap of the game, and then to actually throw to him. Mm-hmm. I was impressed. Uh, you know, good speed. Um, I was I was really happy to see Chris Evans get back into it, get him a touchdown, especially with, you know, the, the issues that he had off field last year. And, of course, you know, Haskins has done a great job last year. He, he's your workhorse. He's going to be the one to grind out those tough yards. Charbonnet's got good speed. He'll, he'll share a lot of the, the workload with, with Haskins, but was... Charbonnet's got that. Speed that you know, if he hits one, a hole, he can straight up. He's gone. I was surprised after that first possession. I don't know if maybe he got dinged up a little bit, or they just pretty much completely went away from him. I think he only had uh, yeah three more carries for zero yards the rest of the game because he broke yeah, that first. I think he I broke think that first right. one for seventy, and he ended up with four for seventy. I was like, what the yeah, heck's going on so here? He, but they didn't really have to do much. I mean, like you said, Evans got in there, carried five times for nineteen yards. Uh, Haskins, I think, had six carries for eighty-two yards. Um, but to Evans real quick, man, listening to, you know, uh, the dude had some issues. He had some academic issues, but he, you know, he manned up. Hey, I made a mistake. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to do to get back. I'm sure you heard he him. He up to it. Right. I'm sure you heard on the broadcast. He got three different jobs in the off season. Yep. He's like, man. Yeah, one pay- of them was a coach at uh, Ann Arbor Pioneer. Yeah. I'm going to pay my way through here. I'm going to get back. I'm going to, you know, get back to the program. And that, that shows the dedication. I like guys like that. Yeah, me too. It's a, it's a good, good feel good story. All right, man. Well, let's let's hop back in. Let's let's uh, talk about the you know the, the down point of the game. Obviously, the block punt can't have that. That, that, se- that seems to happen quite often the last few years with Michigan football. Obviously, going back to the atrocious Michigan State game that you uh, and I were at when that should yeah. have never happened. But it seems like it happens quite often. At least yeah. once or twice a year, this is happening. And we something's got to be done to shore that up. Yeah, I agree. That one uh, that we were at, man, that that broke my heart. <laughs> that was really hard to swallow, you know, at the end of the game. And you're, you're, you're for sure, what was it, eight seconds left, six seconds? And, mm-hmm. and you just, you know, you know, all you got to do is kick the ball away and, and tackle the guy, and the game's over. And Yeah. That, that's, you know, it all broke. That still hurts. It all you... broke loose. And... <laughs> right. I think I sat, there, I sat there in shock for like 15 minutes. You know, I, you remember oh, yeah. I, I flew in from California on that, on that day to watch yep. that. And then yeah, because I, I remember I came and got you. Yeah, man. So so we sit through that and it's over, and then just the flukiest of flukes happen, and what in the world? Then I go home that night to the hotel. Well, to the hotel that night, and the daggone Cubs get beat by the Mets. Just a brutal day for me in uh, in sports, but 
Yeah, we gotta, it was tough. We got to shore. We <laughs> def- yeah. definitely got to shore that up a little bit. And then yeah. going on to the kicking game as far as field goals. What? I I, I honestly thought that Brookhuisen had he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> the return of like, Seth Brookhuisen. Brookhuisen uh, will be at some point in each of these interviews, the next eight weeks, nine weeks. Brookhuisen <laughs> will be brought up at least once, for sure. Because I mean, there's just I don't you know don't know how anyone who's going to be listening to this, if you don't follow Michigan football, he could quite possibly be one of the worst kickers to ever <laughs> play the game. Yeah, God bless the kid. I'm sure he's a great guy, but oh, whew, yeah, he uh, yeah, he he won no no fans in Ann Arbor. But Moody coming out starting over Nordine kind of kind of shocked me, kind of didn't. You know, Nordine's been I, up and down the last few years, and then yeah. I find out Nordine's quote Harbaugh dealing with a little something. Um, of course he is. I think well, I think this week there's going to be a competition because you can't come out first game and, and go zero for three on on no. field goals. I know on the last one, you know, it was a bad snap. Uh, right. The hold wasn't great, so it's not all his fault. But you can't come out opening you know opening day when you win that job and go zero for three. Exactly. Especially considering last year, he was money he last was. year. I mean, you know, Nordine had some rough outings, rough games last year, and Moody came in and, and shirred some stuff up. Was very good. Didn't have the leg, obviously, that Nordine has, mm-hmm. but very accurate. That's and it. for him to come out and miss three like that, I was shocked. Me too, so, I, you know, I hope they, they can figure that out, go back to the drawing board and, you know, get the competition. The competition will be good. It'll, it'll hopefully bring out the best in both of them. You know, I, I went. You, got, you definitely got to have field goals. I mean, that, you, you're talking nine points right there, possible. And you know, if it's a close game, kickers can make or break a team on that. My my least favorite athletes, dude. I can't stand them. <laughs> I hate kickers. Uh, my I dad. I think you've told me that before. My dad walked in twice. as soon, right before half, when they missed the field goal. My dad walked in the door, and all he said to me was, "I know you hate kickers." <laughs> Dude, it, I mean, it's awful. It's uh, like every time there's a big, big spot on the line, they come up short. And I did a little research. I didn't go back. I went back to when Rich Rod first took over, because in my mind, that's when the field goal kicking started to suck. And maybe that was pretty maybe, much when Brookhausen was there, <laughs> right? Maybe before that, it sucked as well. But I went back to 2008. From 2008, so in the 12 plus years, Michigan's attempted 250 field goals and made 182 of them. I mean, if that's a if that's a free throw percentage, pretty good, seventy two point eight percent. But <laughs> yeah, you need a field goal kick. You know, you got to kick in the eighties, man. Low to mid eighties at least. Absolutely. And for Nordine to have been, you know, be on scholarship for kicking, there's no reason he should be missing those kicks. Right. I mean, Dad, going. Like he has. Harbaugh thought so much of him. He spent the night at his house to recruit. Exactly. Him, right. We all heard that story, the climbing the tree and all that deal, but he. <sighs> Hopefully he can gain that swagger back. He's that kid who he comes out and he, he he's, you know, he's, he's got that swagger, but you've got to be able to back it up. <laughs> exactly, man. Don't come out there all <laughs> cocky, you know, hitting 48, 49% of your kicks or something like that, right. which he's not hitting that low. You know, he's doing better than that. But, man, you, you, you can't be in the 60s, dude. you got to – No. I don't know. Like I said, that that's my least favorite spot in all the sports. Just I can't stand I it. Anytime anybody kicks, just, just brutal. I don't know if you watched the end of the uh, – Seahawk game last night, but I did. Arizona's kicker. It's like, dude, yep. you got a chance to win the game. You're gonna beat Russell Wilson and you shank it. Now they ended up winning, but my goodness, if it's my team, I'm going for two every time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going why, for two, and I'm not punting either. That's why I'll never be a coach. <laughs> Let's flip over to the other side of the ball, man. Defense again. I thought, I thought they really held their own in the first half but really stepped up big in the second half. I think I agree. I think early I don't know if it was adjustments made that that was the difference there, but I agree that it was a big difference in the second half compared to the first. I think early on obviously the the big hit by Mike Barrett who oh my gosh. How awesome did he Where'd play? Where he come from? He played he played so well, man. That big hit, you know, knocks the ball, knocks the ball loose from um, Minnesota's quarterback and Morgan, Je- yeah. yeah, Morgan Jeter picks that up and Rumbles in for a touchdown. That was a big momentum shifter in, in my eyes. But oh, yeah, that was huge. That that kind of took the momentum from the blocked punt and the t- immediate touchdown that Minnesota had. You know, because it was a sh- it was shortly after that we had the, obviously the big seventy yard run, but then a good defensive stand. We get the ball back. We miss the field goal, but then on the ensuing drive, I mean, it was immediate right after that. I think it may have been the first play mm-hmm. after we missed the field goal. 
the bear busts through off that corner and it drills Morgan, you know, ball pops free. Jeter takes it all the way in for that score. That was huge. You know what that, that hit it, reminded me of? That reminded me of Brandon Graham against I, Michigan State. Yes. You remember that? Yes. Yeah. I was, I was going to say either that one or the Jadavian Clowney hit in the bowl game that I'm pretty sure they still haven't found Vincent's head. I was there, man. I was at that game. That, uh, that was brutal. The only, the only thing I can say about that one that didn't make it to me as impressive is Clowney was completely unblocked. There, there's nobody there, right? Exactly. No one touched him. And Vincent Smith's 5'6", five, 5'7", five, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, Clowney had him by a good 100 pounds and 12 inches. At least. <laughs> Plus, he was untouched. Right. But, again, but, yeah, coming back to Barrett, I was going to say, you know, I'm sure we were going to talk about him. Mm-hmm. But, in my opinion, he may have been the defensive player of the game. I mean, the kid had five tackles, a sack, a couple tackles for a loss. He had that forced fumble uh, hit, which, you know, led to the scoop and score. A couple drives later, he gets a kickoff return and runs it back for darn near 50 yards. Absolutely. He had a fumble recovery. Right, yeah, Corum. He picked up the Corum fumble. Exactly. I mean, that was, yeah, you know, we obviously dropped the ball, but he picks it up. That's huge, a huge game. You, you know, going back in, in Minnesota's defense, obviously they had that big play there in the first half where they went for it on fourth and one or fourth and two. But, you know, they're, they're missing their kicker. They're, they're missing quite a few people. So had they been at full strength, that game may have turned out differently. Uh, I, don't, I still think Michigan would have won. But, it, you know, certain plays here or there may have been different. They had to shuffle their line around a little bit. So they, they started doing either right. these squib kicks or these just – high kind of floating in almost pooch kick looking things and Barrett picks it up and says all right I'm gonna I'm gonna rumble man and he he took off I think he went something like <laughs> he 66 did. yards on that yeah it was a, it was a definitely a, a great great run that was that was, was fun to that see. One up. two other guys well a couple other guys that stood out for me was Aiden Hutchinson hands down this dude's a first or second round pick like he played lights out yeah. six total or six total tackles five solo tackles like he was just giving the offensive line fits all night even if he wasn't getting in there making the tackle he was drawing double teams he looked fantastic and in the second and half Quiddy Pay really came on in that second half first half yes he did didn't hear much about him but second half man he comes in i think he had two big sacks and three tackles for loss he played really well uh and he then did. there then, was good I'll say there was one drive I remember uh, with talking about Quiddy Pay. There was three straight sacks. Yes, and he had two. We of had, them. yeah, and he had two of them. I think uh, Kemp had the other one. Right, but I think it was Kemp and Pay on both of those. Yeah, I, I mean think, that was just right. a ridiculous drive. Yeah. You know, stand right there. Yeah, they looked really good. I thought you know Cam McGrone made a couple big plays. I'll tell you what, man, mm-hmm. I love I love that kid. That intensity he has. He comes shooting through that line. Obviously, he's kind of taking over that role for Cleek Hudson, and I don't think he's missed a beat. I think he's he's fan, I think he's going to be fantastic. I think he has a real good chance to be a you know first team All Big Tenner. I uh, thought he oh, played I well, and I thought Dax Hill played well in that first half, shutting not shutting down Bateman, but really really controlling Bateman a little bit. Um, and then all of a sudden he's yeah, gone. I agree. It's like what happened to Dax, and they never have discussed the injury, what happened to him. But I, I did hear that he should be back practicing tomorrow. Or Wednesday, so hopefully he's back for the oh, for the Michigan State game this week, and uh, you know he can get in there. And he's tough, man. He like Harbaugh said, he's he might be the best athlete on that team. Yeah, he's definitely a good athlete. I didn't actually realize um, they had a, a chart on the game for the NFL rosters for uh, for you know this year that we have people from last year who are on the active NFL rosters. This year, mm-hmm. and there was three linebackers, a defensive end, and a safety that we lost. Um, obviously, Khalid Hudson was huge, you know, when he went. Uh, Josh Uche was another big one. Uche was good, yeah. Yep. Not to mention that Lavert Hill graduated, yeah. and Ambry Thomas is opted out. Yeah, I thought that one. I, I think that one's going to end up hurting over time. I was hoping he would come oh, back sure. as well. But you know, I yeah, think. But that, de- I mean, they got a lot of people to fill, and I think the defense did a really good job. You know, doing that, especially for the first game. Yeah, they gave up 24 points. Um, but for the first game, I thought they played very well. It's going to take a little bit of time for them to, to really settle in, get comfortable in their positions. I agree. Now, talk talk a little bit about the bad the bad things I saw. Is obviously, the, the defense, why can't Don Brown defend the slant? 
What's, I don't know. What's the issue, man? That that crossing it, route. It's not slant. just Don Brown. We've ne- I swear it seems like we can never defend a slant. Me and you, back every every game, it's always why can't we defend a slant? I just I I yeah. feel that he's he's a good enough defensive coordinator that he could make those adjustments. And I know that's not an easy play to defend at all. I'm not saying it is. Oh, no. but, but when that's the bread and butter for the other team against you, I mean, look at, you know, the last game of the year, that's the Buckeyes just run that, you know, cross the middle every time, man, and it just picks up chunks and chunks and chunks. And it absolutely kills us. Absolutely every does. Every single time. And then, you know, with him leaving the with him leaving the, the DBs kind of out there on the island, hey, man, it's one-on-one, step up or get burnt. I, I'm kind of nervous when we play those – those big, you know, those big teams, and again with Bateman, that's why I was kind of surprised that we held him down in check. But they didn't really take shots deep to him, you know. No, they didn't. I thought they would do that a little more. Vincent Gray, I think Vincent's pretty good. He scares me at times, um, but overall, I thought the defense, you know, I thought they played. I thought they played really well. Hopefully, they can just get those those little crossing patterns, those little slants, short up a little bit more throughout the season. Yeah, I hope they can. I uh, another person that I thought actually did a pretty good job who, uh, you know, young guy was uh, green, the safety. Yes. Yes. He had like three, I, I will say this right place, right time. He had three really good pass breakups. Mm-hmm. However, two of those hit him right in the hands. And I'm not, I'm not talking like hit him in the hands. I'm talking like he had both hands on him. Yeah, Catch him. Exactly. That's why he's not a wide receiver, huh? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I, thought- yeah, I agree. Um, defense did a very good job. I, I was surprised. That they, like you were, you said, putting the corners out on an island with no safety help. I'm surprised that they did not at least spy one safety to Bateman mm-hmm. to help to help the corner just to take him out of the equation. Right. Right. But then again, you know, I'm not a defensive coordinator, and he had a decent decent game, but it was nothing huge. Right. Right. They like I said, they kept him. They kept him pretty much in check. Um, it just it just scares me when you do play those teams that that are going to try right. to take I those agree. deep shots downfield and uh but hey who knows man maybe they'll maybe they'll make adjustments and maybe hopefully Dax will be back full full go and like you said I didn't mention Green earlier when I should have cuz he he really stepped up and he had a really good game. He did. Well, let's flip it over to to Minnesota. You know, we're talk about them a little bit. We we first touched on Muhammad Ibrahim earlier. I mean, 26 carries, 140 yards, two TDs. This dude ran the ball extremely well. I don't know how much of that was him, how much of that was his offensive line, but I'll tell you what, he ran the ball. He impressed me. He probably he impressed me just about maybe as much as anybody in that entire game. I completely agree. I, I was I kept saying every you know every time he touched the ball, I was like this kid's a beast. It took you know he would hit the hole and it took three four people to bring him down. All right. Uh, you know the offensive line their their line did a good job opening the holes to, to allow him to get through. Um, but again, it took a few people to bring him down and, uh, we had good penetration Mm -hmm. getting the, uh, some of our defensive ends in there. Morgan didn't really do a whole lot. I mean, he threw the ball a little bit, but coming back to Abraham, man, the kid, he runs the ball and he runs the ball hard every time he gets it. Yeah. He's going to be fun to watch for sure. I was very impressed with, with Minnesota. Honestly, I, 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 like I said earlier, I didn't, Really, I didn't realize that they went eleven and two last year, and I, I really think Flex got them coming, you know, in a good direction. And I think they could really challenge for that division. Absolutely, so. there's no way they can't win six or seven games this year. Especially, you know, they get healthy, get the five or six players back, get that offensive line shirt up. Because even with a makeshift offensive line, again, you know, Ibrahim rushed for one forty. Oh, um, exactly. So you get, you know, you get the other three starters back in there. They might wreak some wreak some havoc. And the good thing with Michigan's D, you know, they gave up 140, which is not great. But overall, they only gave up uh, 129 on 41 carries when you take into account the sacks and all that. Um, they had pressure on Morgan pretty much the entire night, 18 for 31, 197, TD and a pick. Uh, but he never scared me. He never – I never thought, man, this guy's going to make a comeback. You know what I mean? He just didn't uh, – I don't know. I, I think maybe the fact he wasn't throwing deep to Bateman. Um, right. There was one time – one throw down to him. Actually, it wasn't even a bait, I think it was to someone else that he took a deep shot and uh, it got you know slowed down and caught it. Mm-hmm. And if it wouldn't have been for one guy, one defender, the kid would have been gone. Right. But that was really about the only deep shot they took. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember. Was, there wasn't a lot. I know there was one. There was 
at least one or two pass interference uh, calls on on the you know Michigan's defense. But yeah, I figured, man, you got this kid back in. He's your best player, man. You know, target him 15, 20 times. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, I, there may have been one or two times that he took a deep shot downfield, and again, I remember a pass interference call and one where their receiver slowed down and got it. Um, so that's something you're going to have to shore up on the safety or on the corners, or you're going to have to give the safety some help. Give the final stats: Michigan ended up with 481 total yards on offense, Minnesota 326. Um, I mean, t- time of possession is what got me. Minnesota still had the ball for almost 10 minutes more. Uh, yeah, so that's that, huge. That's that that like you said, man. In big games like that, that's when the defense is going to get tired. You got to get, you know, you mm-hmm. got to win that time of possession battle. Yeah, that was big. Cause like I said earlier, I think it was, you know, that may have been right towards the end of the second quarter. It was we had it for five minutes. They had it for fifteen minutes. Right. I mean, that's just it's a huge difference when you're, you know, it takes a big toll on your defense Absolutely. when they're out on the field, second air the whole time, can't get a break. Absolutely, so, man. And the seven penalties, and, the seven penalties yeah, in the game. Hurt. It didn't. It didn't. Obviously, it didn't hurt us too much. We, you know, won pretty handily. But you got to shore that up a little bit too. Seven penalties, eighty yards. I mean, you're giving them basically the length of the field one time. Got to get that kind of, you know, get that under control. And I think that'll come. You know, you, you got some guys playing new positions, some new guys in there. So I think, you know, next week, the week after, the week after, I think we're going to see some some good improvement. I agree. I mean, like again, it's the first game of the season. Probably some nerves in there. I think they'll get a lot better. Overall, I was very, you know, very impressed. I do have one question, though. Yeah. What happened to the khakis? Yeah, that was kind of shocking. I bet he had them on under under those, because it was cold, man. It was like 32. <laughs> it was cold, but I, I, I really, they even mentioned that on TV. Yeah. That he didn't have his khakis on. Duke can coach naked if he be. I don't care what, what he coaches in, as long as he wins. I agree. Win that last game I of the year. Agree. You can wear whatever, which we'll get into that obviously later on. I don't think that's going to happen just yet, but I was surprised. I was very surprised. Yeah. Overall, quick summary of your thoughts on, on the game. What uh, what stood out? Who was your player of the game? I'll give you my player of the game. What would you think? You want one for offense and defense or just in total team? Just total team. Total team. Ugh. Okay, well, I'll, I'll give you offense and defense just because it's tough. Okay. De- defense – has to be Barrett, in mm-hmm. my opinion. I mean, that kid, for for being young, not hard, you know, not starting last year, he had a heck of a game. Like I said, I mean, he he came out five tackles, a couple tackles for loss, the sack, the forced fumble that led to the scoop and score, the kickoff return, mm-hmm. the fumble recovery when Corum dropped it. I mean, that's just a huge, huge game. You take a couple of them out, and that's a that's a big change in your game. Right. Um, you know, defense I thought played very well, but in my opinion, he's he's defensive player of the game. Absolutely. Um, offensive, you got to give it to Milton. Just the the poise, in my opinion, that that he showed on his first start to be able to come out there, control the game like he did, not make the stupid mistakes, and, and you know, lead his team down the field. Good, you know, good QB runs, smart QB runs, getting out of bounds when not, not taking the hit, that kind of stuff. I think he did a great job controlling the game. Absolutely, man. I agree on both parts. Like you said, I think, I think he was the offensive player of the game. I think, I think Barrett's t- you know definitely the defensive player of the game. And if I had to give just one player of the game, it would be Barrett. I mean, the sixty-six yard kickoff return, <laughs> seven tackles, five solo, Huge. one sack, yeah. one and a half tackles for loss. Like he just he came out gangbusters. Um, yeah, looking forward. That, those to, are some stats. Looking forward to seeing him and how he progresses the rest of the year. Me too. So on to on to Michigan State, man. Next week we uh, that was I told you I'm gonna watch one game, you know, one other game each week and kind of discuss it a little bit. And unfortunately, I chose Rutgers, Michigan State, and quite possibly, <laughs> ser- seriously, quite possibly the worst football game I've ever watched. It was. Well, I, I don't know if you listened to the to the highlights, if you saw the highlights. It was, I didn't. I didn't listen. I didn't see anything other than I saw one thing come across. Well, two things, I guess, if you're reading it. One was Rutgers beats Sparty 38-27 to at home. Mm-hmm. The other one was first career – or, I'm sorry, first conference win for Rutgers since 2017. Yep. Yep. <laughs> to me, like, to me, that just says what in the world is going on in East Lansing. 
I mean, I, I know it's, you know, their, their coach is first It's a new game. coach, obviously, you know, but dang, man, that's just – and and I – considered what they've done over the past, you know, five, six, seven years. Right. In, in the rivalry between Michigan and Michigan State, we've had some tough games against them. Absolutely. So for them to come out and, and opening day and, and just get – beat at home by Rutgers. Yeah, Mel Tucker, you that's, know, that, that's, that's, a, that's a tough pill to swallow. That's a tough start for Mel Tucker. It had yeah. Michigan State <clears> in the game <throat> lost five fumbles through two picks. So they yeah, had seven, saw seven turnovers. Seven turnovers. But on the other side, <laughs> Rutgers had three. They had two fumbles and a pick. And it was, wow. I mean, it was just unbelievable, dude. Rutgers quarterback Noah Vedral, to me, I don't even, I look at him and I'm like, well, he's a division, I'm, you know, I'm, I never played football. I'm not a quarterback. But this guy doesn't look like a Division One quarterback to me. I mean, he was 18 for 29 for 161, a TD and a pick. But he, he just didn't look athletic, making terrible reads, terrible throws. I'm like, what the heck is going on? Like, is this the JV team? You know? <laughs> just seeing these guys out. And, again, probably a great kid. But watching that oh, game sure. just looked awful. They have, you know, Isaiah Pacheco in the backfield, who ran really well against us the last couple years. He only ran for 61 yards, 19 carries. Did have a couple TDs, but Michigan State, man, I, you got to take tough. care of the ball. You know they ended yeah. up Lombardi on paper. Rocky Lombardi ended up 31 for 43, 319 with three TDs, but threw two picks, had at least a fumble or two, and you know that was kind of stat fillers. <clears throat> Those 319 was late in the game when they had to throw, and it just right. didn't. It, I don't know, man. I, I, I like, you know, obviously as a Michigan guy, I always want to see Sparty lose. I always want to see Ohio State lose. So, you know, I'll take one out of the two, you know. Right. So seeing Sparty go down like that struggles, fantastic, especially as we go in or as they come to us next week in Ann Arbor. Um, I like our chances. Hopefully, like, we, yeah, I do too. Hopefully we can just play smart again, you know, protect the football like, like we did. But you know, it's hopefully defense can get some turnovers. Anything can happen, man. It's a rivalry game. Michigan State plays us tough. Um, exactly. You know, I think I think Michigan opens as a I think a twenty one or twenty three and a half point favorite, which pumped the brakes a little bit. I think that's too high. You can't. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. In a rivalry game, it shouldn't. Uh, I don't think it ever should be that high. But uh, I agree. Yeah. So I'm I'm anxious to to get to that. You also had uh, Wisconsin play pretty well on Friday night. Their highly touted quarterback that uh, I think his name's Graham Mertz, maybe. Yeah, he got hurt, didn't he? Well, he I think he might have tested positive for COVID. That's what, that's they were, what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what they were thinking. So if that's the case, man, he might be out a couple weeks, and that could be killer. I mean, he he was twenty for twenty one for five TDs in a blowout wow. win over a really bad Illinois team. Uh, watched a lot of that. Wanted to see how Brandon Peters played, and unfortunately, he he ran better than he threw the ball. Uh, but mm-hmm. Illinois is really really bad. Uh, you know, shift it to Columbus. Obviously, Nebraska comes in there, kept it close early, which sometimes happens in Columbus. But you know, the final result is going to be a blowout. High yeah. Well, the, the, right. The thing there is, you know, I, of course, I hate to say it, but High State's good, good, a great football team. Brian Day is a great coach, and a good football team is going to make those adjustments. I mean, with, yeah, they, they were up. Well, they was fourteen to fourteen at one point. Right. What was the final? 50, some, yeah, some, you know, 52, 100, 175 to seventeen. <laughs> so close. they they made an adjustment, and Nebraska got a field goal. Right. That's it. Right. So that's what a good coach does. And like you said, man, you know, you Ohio, make those adjustments. Ohio State, as bad as we hate to say it, as bad as you know, we're we're realistic. Ohio State's the best team in the Big Ten, top team, top three team in the country. Um, they're going to be tough. I wouldn't be surprised to see them win it all this year. I think they. I think they have the talent. I think they have they have that quarterback. Man, Fields is solid. He's he, is. he knows how to play. Uh, Northwestern stomped Maryland forty three to three. Pat Fitzgerald hundredth win at Northwestern. I love to see that. They're probably yeah, he's a good coach. they're probably oh, my yeah. second favorite team to watch in the Big Ten. I really like the way they play. I like Fitzgerald. Um, so to see them just womp on Maryland was nice. Yep. Uh, yeah. So how about how about Indiana beating Penn State? Yeah, I was going to talk about in that the as overtime. well. Man. Isn't that crazy? Of course, you know you always have a controversial call when you when you got something going on like that. But I sat and watched it a couple times, and I to me they ruled it a touchdown. It looked like I didn't see anything to overturn it. I mean, tough call, but I think it was the right call. I th- I think like you said, I think you you can't overturn it. Had they said no touchdown out of bounds, you couldn't have overturned that either. Um, right. So, so I think it's got to stand. 
But what a brutal start for Penn State, man. You know, in, Indiana's that team. I likened him yesterday to, like, the Keith Jardine. If you're ever a UFC fan, Jardine mm. could always get to that point but can never get over the hump. Well, Indiana's yep. like that. Indiana's always, you know, they're always right there. They're always competitive, <clears throat> but they can't take that next step. This was a yep. good step for them. I don't see them being super this year. I thought the quarterback, mm. the quarterback has a lot of issues throwing the ball, not a great thrower, made some big plays when he needed to, but I don't see them, you know, I don't see them being great for a while. But big win, and then Penn State has to go, you know, and play Ohio Two, State next yep. week. And I think that's in Happy Valley, if I'm not mistaken, because I think that was supposed to be the whiteout game. It's and not going to matter. No, no, not at all. That's what I'm saying. You know, Penn State's <laughs> going to start off, you know, 0 and 2, man, and it's it's hard to dig out of that. So, oh, uh, for sure, especially when you're only playing conference games. Exactly, exactly, man. You, know, you don't uh, have those non-conference games to kind of help help you with the rankings or anything when you when you do beat someone at a non-conference. Exactly, man, and it's it's going to be tough for them to. You know, they might end up – it might be a chain reaction. You know, you get that first loss, you get demoralized, then you go play Ohio State and probably get beat by three or four touchdowns. You know, you got to have some willpower to bounce back from something like that. Yeah, that's going to be a, a true you know testament to the rest of their season. They're either going to take two punches on the chin and climb back up and, and you know, have a great season you know, for the rest of the season, or they're going to take it and get knocked out, and it's going to be, it's going to be a rough season. Absolutely. Well, one other thing, maybe the biggest story in college football this weekend, Jalen Waddle of Alabama. Man, I don't know if you saw it, but prayers out, prayers out the to ankle. Yeah. yeah, ankle injury, probably done for the season. Top, got to be top two or three wide receiver in the game, and that really, you know, that obviously Alabama is like Clemson and like Ohio State. They can plug that next guy in and just not miss a beat most of the time. But this guy's a special talent, man. And to take away that deep threat, to take away Waddle from the lineup, that's gonna that's gonna hurt Alabama. That's really gonna hurt them. And hopefully the kid's okay and can bounce back. I don't know if you know if this might be his last year. I'm not sure if he's a sophomore or junior, but who knows if he opts out or whatever and decides to go pro. But hopefully he'll come back stronger and and healthy, man. You hate right. to see somebody of that. You, you hate, hate to see, see anyone get hurt. Yeah, especially anybody. you know. You know I always say, even when we're playing the Buckeyes, I hate to see any kid get hurt. Because if I want to beat someone, I want to beat someone at their best. Absolutely. And just not to mention just for the future of those kids. I mean, a lot of them kids who might be going to the NFL, that, that that's their career. Absolutely, man. This kid, they're, they're, that, if they're good enough to, to get there, then and, and an injury like that could could really, really you know hurt them for their future. Absolutely. So this, I hate to see any kid get hurt. Absolutely. This kid's a first or second rounder. You know, that's a that's a lot of money that oh, could sure. possibly be taken away from his his future. But man, absolutely. good good first show. I enjoyed it. Um, Rounding out, just kind of bringing everything back together. Talking about the AP poll came out today. You got just talking about. I hadn't seen it yet. Talking about the Big Ten teams. Ohio State moved up from fifth to third, which they should. Uh, Notre Notre Dame dropped a, a spot to fourth, um, which Notre Dame should be in the Big Ten, but that's a whole different, uh, you know, yeah. whole different conversation. Wisconsin moved up sure. from fourteenth to ninth. You got Michigan coming up five spots from eighteen to thirteen. Indiana entered at seventeen. Penn State dropped from eight to eighteen to round out the you know the Big Ten presence in the yeah. AP top twenty five. So you know, good little uh, good to see. I think those rankings right now are a little bit you know a little bit askew. You got Cincinnati yeah, ranked seven. Well, you, you, here's my thing with the rankings. You know, I'm glad to see a bunch of Big Ten teams in there, but this is just my opinion. We're in week what seven, right, of the college football season, and the Big Ten just played their first first games and Pac-12 so, hasn't played at all and yeah exactly so in my opinion I feel I feel the Big Ten shouldn't have been in the rankings until at least maybe the third or fourth week when they start to catch up to some of these other teams you know you, who get a bye week and they'll gain a game but some of these other teams are you know six and oh six and one whatever you know whatever it is but I, I just I don't feel and I'm not taking anything away from like Ohio State, who yeah, they're a great team. And are they going to be in that position at number three towards the end of the season? There's a good chance. Absolutely. But I don't feel like they should be there right now without having played a game. You know, I think they they should have waited maybe three or four games and then get them into there. Sure. And I because see- at the end of the at the end of the season, when you've got all these other teams who are done, and then you've got the Big Ten teams still playing. There's going to be a lot of controversy, in my opinion, on, on who your top teams are. Because just like in the normal season, 
you know, people always say, well, it's good that if you're going to lose, you want to lose early mm-hmm. because you can always build back up. But if you lose late, it knocks you way down in the rankings. Right. Well, what about when the Big Ten has five games left and some of these SEC teams aren't playing whatsoever? They're done. Right. Are you And the Big Ten, you know, some of these teams keep winning. Are you going to keep moving them up because they're winning when they're already, you know, at a certain rank? Right. When these other teams aren't playing, I, I don't think that's fair. Right. And I can't, kind of on the flip side of that, you got a couple teams that are kind of head scratchers that if this was a normal season, they probably wouldn't be in the rankings. Coastal Carolina is 5-0, and and they're ranked 20th. Coastal Carolina, right. I don't know if they've ever been in the top 25 before. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, so to see them in there, Iowa State is, they're sitting with a 3-2 and two record, and they're ranked 23rd. Oklahoma's 3-2, and two and they're ranked 24th. So I think in a normal year when the Pac-12 would be playing, when the Big Ten would be in, you know, Week 7 as well, you wouldn't see those two teams with two losses up in the top 25 right. at this point. Maybe later on, if they're nine and two, ten and two, then they would be, you know, creep back in there. But at this point, for those two teams to be to be three and two and rank twenty third and twenty fourth, kind of a head scratcher. Yeah, I, it makes me wonder how, how it's all going to play out. And, and again, you know, if the, if the bowl committee would originally just went and said, "Hey, we're going to do eight teams instead of four, I don't think it would be such of an issue at the end of the year. Mm-hmm. But it, you know, it's not there yet if they even do get there. But I, like I said, or I don't, I don't agree with the, with the Big Ten being ranked where they're at right now. Give it a couple games. I agree, man. Well, let's wrap this up. Let's wrap the first show up with predictions next week. Give me your prediction, Sparty, coming into Ann Arbor. You know, I'm hoping for, especially if they have a showing like they did against Rutgers, that I'm hoping it's going to be a really good showing for us. I'm hoping for a few turnovers, some good quarterback play. Um, I'm going to probably say that Michigan wins, and I'm going to go, I'm going to say 45-13. Okay, that's pretty close to what I had. I had, you know, it's a rivalry game still. Michigan State's going to come to play. Uh, They got embarrassed last week. I'm going to say Michigan still wins. I'm going to say 38-17. So, uh you know, we'll see, man. I hope, hopefully, I'm wrong. Hopefully, it's 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 a shutout. I'd love to <laughs> yeah, see them come well, in and shut them out. You know, uh, it's time to take back control of that series, get them off, completely off of our radar as far as a rivalry goes. Get back up there, you know, and, and focus on that last game of the year and get to where we're we're playing at a at a better level. But hopefully, you know, Sparty comes in and uh, and and we take care of business. I agree. All right, man. Well, thanks for doing this again. Let's let's do it again yeah. next week. Um, I'll pick another game next week. I will watch the Ohio State Penn State game. That'll be the game I kind of the extra game I kind of break down. Uh, I know we got you know we got some Buckeye friends obviously that that hopefully will listen to this and uh, we'll talk a little bit about them. <laughs> oh, I don't, I'm sure they will. I, I don't want to exclude them. You know, I'm not going to be a homer. Obviously, everybody who knows me knows my feelings towards them. But I mean, we're doing well, a po- I mean, we're doing a podcast. We're talking part. about them, man. <laughs> Right, but for the most part, you know, anyone who knows you probably knows me and knows we pretty much share about the same feelings when it comes to that. Exactly, exactly. Well, all right, man, tell the kids and the wife, hey, for me. Uh, tell Christina you definitely should have won the pumpkin carving contest, and I think it was rigged. I will let her know. Uh, but we'll get back with you here pretty soon, and we'll do it again, buddy, okay? All right, buddy. All right, man. Talk to you next week. Talk to you Go soon. Blue. Go Blue. All right, guys, that's the show. Thanks for tuning back in after the long hiatus. I hope you guys like the new format. Again, it's going to be talking a lot about Michigan football, but it's going to be talking a lot about the Big Ten as well. Buckeye fans, hang in there. There's some Buckeye talk coming as well. I'm going to sit down with some some buddies of mine who are huge Buckeye fans, and and they're going to give us some input and give their thoughts and, and, and their takes because, you know, I don't watch a whole lot of Buckeye football, so I'll let them come on and kind of give their thoughts and, and, you know, see what they have to say. But uh, hopefully you guys like it. Give me some feedback. Let me know what you think. We'll be back at you next Monday with some new content. Until then, guys, enjoy the games and go blue.